All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for your patience while we unsuccessfully navigated this latest time change, but we're so pleased that you stuck around to join us for this very special presentation of the second public event of YALA in Focus, um, the newly formed IAALA International Association of Armenian Librarians and Archivists under the umbrella um, of the Society for Armenian Studies. In case you missed our first presentation, a little bit about us. Uh, this organization was created during the pandemic shortly after the Armenian genocide was recognized in the United States and um, also formalized as an accepted and official uh, subject heading. So members of this executive board were active in submitting the formal application to move from Armenian massacres to Armenian genocide and when we had that small but mighty victory, in large part due to the advocacy of the Armenian National Committee of America, we began emailing each other and uh, this organization was organically born. YALA was created to provide a worldwide platform for archivists and librarians uh, working with Armenian collections to network with each other, share information and ideas and solve challenges, promote issues germane to our field, encourage participation and mentorship, and to uncover surface and map uh, hidden collections, both physical and digital. So if that sounds like a whole lot, it certainly is. And that's where you come in and why we need your help. Please join us by visiting the Society for Armenian Studies website and um, also iaala.org. We sincerely hope that our programming will be dynamic and collaborative, reflecting you, our audience, um, if there's any topic you'd like to see addressed or if you'd like to present yourself, please reach out to us and let us know. This series is called Yalla in Focus. And now on to today's program. I'm pleased to introduce uh, Levon Abdoyan, a member of the first executive board of Yalla and uh, esteemed librarian emeritus, Armenian and Georgia area specialist for Library of Congress, who will serve as moderator for today's presentation and introduce our fantastic speakers. So take it away, Levon. Thank you, Ani John, and welcome to everyone. And I, I echo Ani's uh, apologies for the mix up on the time change, uh, which is solely my fault, but I am delighted that so many of you are excited enough about uh, our program to have stayed. I'm not going to take up much time uh, with this introduction. And it's for that reason that I prepared the biographies of our esteemed uh, speakers, uh, just so we can hear them and not us. I do want to say something personal about Pushamadhyam. I discovered this several years ago on Facebook. And for those who despair on Facebook, uh, it, it, because of groups such as Husha Madian and the Armenian DNA project, it has proved its worth. The work that Husha Madian has done is extremely important, not only for the knowledge of everyone, but for the focus of this association to librarians and archivists. And I can assure our speakers that I and others have used their product to help researchers on all levels. And so they are to be congratulated. And those speakers are Dr. Elke Hartmann and Dr. Vahe Tashchan, who, as you will see from their biographies, have quite a, an estimable academic resume. But what interests us is that in 2010, together, they co-founded what they called Pushamadyan, a project to reconstruct Ottoman Armenian town and village life. Uh, it invited, among other things, people to share their photographs and they have constructed um, albums of family photographs, mine among them. Now that is personally fulfilling, but it also allows people like me to see where their relatives walked and where their neighbors walked and how they lived. So without further ado, I would like to introduce the two people responsible for this truly marvelous and miraculous um, program, Dr. Elke Hartmann and Dr. Vahe Tashchan, to speak to us about this initiative. 
Vahe Elka, please. Hey, uh, thank you very much for this wonderful invitation. Uh, so I will start then, I will give the floor to Elka. Uh, just a few words about, uh, about the Hushamadi and the project. Uh, it's been already uh, 11 years since Hushamadian, the website was established. It was in 2011. Uh, I would like here emphasize that during all these years, our website experienced uh, multiple changes or fundamental uh, changes. One thing that remained the same is the concept to present on our web pages the Armenian uh, daily life in Ottoman Armenian cities, towns, and villages. Uh, or uh, to reconstruct fragments, uh, because we are talking about fragments here, of the diverse and rich uh, Armenian heritage in each uh, geographical uh, place. So therefore, there is uh, a special place in our website, uh, which is the main section of the website, uh, where you can select a specific place, for example, Harpert, Diyarbekir, Gesaria, Sebastia, Musada, Rodosto, Van, and so on. And you can read here uh, articles on this selected uh, place. Uh, the topics could be very diverse. Uh, you can find here articles about religion, religious customs, festivals, uh, uh, games, uh, schools, churches, monasteries, pilgr uh, pilgrimage places, uh, dances, songs, and uh, many others. So each of these articles are illustrated with old photographs, uh, sometimes drawings. Uh, you can find here maps prepared by our team, sometimes videos based on the materials that we find on this specific uh, region or place. So this was the early uh, Hushamadian. Uh, this is the way that we presented ourselves to the public in the first years. As I said, this important section is still conserved. Uh, it is our main section, but we have now another important section which was never planned uh, in the beginning. So let me explain in a very short uh, phrases uh, this new section or relatively new section. Uh, after the first years, when we became a popular website, uh, many of our visitors started to participate to our efforts to reconstruct a memory, a past life. How? Uh, mainly by sending to us digital copies uh, of their family archives, things that are related uh, to their ancestors back in the Ottoman Empire, for example, old family pictures, unpublished memoirs sometimes, uh, letters, uh, memory objects uh, like, uh, I don't know, clothes, embroidery, uh, ustensil, and so on. So this was real a challenge for us because we started to receive thousands of digital pictures and the senders of these materials wished to see them uh, displayed on the website. Uh, and uh, this way came the idea to open a new section and we called it Open Digital Archive or simply ODA. So we present in our ODA section, uh, collections uh, of memory items preserved by Armenian families all around the world, uh, short micro histories of each of these families. Uh, the family histories could go back as far as possible, but we cover the history of the family. So we, uh, I mean, uh, not only the Ottoman, part of the family, a side of the family story, but we cover also the first decades uh, after the genocide when the survivors started a new life in exile that could be in diaspora or in Soviet Armenia. Recently, we even started to cover stories that are related only to the first decades of Armenian life in diaspora. For example, just yesterday, we published an article on the Armenian refugee camps in Damascus. Uh, and uh, we will publish in a few weeks an article on Greek Armenian refugees who were settled in the town of Kalamata in Greece in the early 1920s. Most of them lived in a refugee camp here in Kalamata, which was later in April 1943 burned by the Nazis during the occupation of the country by the Nazi regime. So the ODA section is becoming an important space to document, archive, and study the life of Armenian families from Ottoman times 
until the early decades of their diaspora life. I give now the floor to Elke to continue. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, let me first say before I continue, um, thank you for the invitation to, to, to speak here and to present the project. Um, and uh, so as uh, Levon Avdoyan already mentioned in his introduction, uh, for us, the point is not only to collect the archive and somehow to build up the pan-Armenian archive of these thousands, hundreds and thousands of families and individuals and fragments and to put them together to, to a huge mosaic. But in doing so, each fragment is presented in context. It is contextualized. And here, it, this is very important. It's not only about collecting, but it is about bringing these memories and items and fragments to life by connecting them with contexts, with the stories connected to them, um, and putting them in relation to all the other families from the same region or from other regions. So this makes more, it's more than just the sum of all this collection. And uh, so this is why this is also important to, um, so there, 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 is a, there is a point in collecting items or collecting archives or building up a museum. The minute you take an item out of its, um, of its um, original context and you put it into a museum, on the one hand, you save it. On the other hand, you stop its life somehow and you put it in a museum and you mummify it. So what we do is we collect and by, by the, in the digital format, we, we do both of these movements. We keep the object and we leave the object within its natural and original context with the family who keeps it as a very, um, very dear item, as a, something, a holy fragment of the lost life. And in the same time, we equip the item with all the stories which the family's members still know and which usually you don't have if you put an item into a museum and don't know the story any longer. So we combine the further living and the ongoing life of the item by keeping it with the family in its original surrounding. And in the same time, we assemble it into a digital and, and life, let's say museum, but an interactive museum where information can be added, let's say to photographs or family stories can be connected to each other. So this is, um, this is yeah, building connections and bringing, bringing the things to life. Maybe I will, um, we will go on with Vahe, um, continuing um, with some examples of the website. Exactly. So I will continue along the same line uh, and I will present uh, here some concrete examples of our web pages where you will see how the family owned, uh, just a second, uh, 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 or fa fa uh, family collections uh, where we present documents, materials, and the stories. Uh, and you will see how we present them and how uh, they are studied by, by our team. So the first one uh, is the Kazanjian family collection uh, from, uh, from Los Angeles. Uh, it was published recently. Uh, so there are here some hundred historical photographs, uh, a large number of memory items, an almost 900 page unpublished memory book on the region of uh, Harpert Harput. Uh, I must say that it is rare to find such a large number of and valuable historical materials in Armenian families. The main figure here uh, is uh, Pelibos Kazanjian, the person who conserved most of the materials uh, which are displayed on this page. Uh, he was born in the village of Keserik uh, in the valley of Harpert. Uh, while he was still very young, his family relocated to Husenik. 
And Pilibos lived in the United States from 1887 to 1890, and then again from 1896 to 1901. And in 1907, alongside his family, he permanently left Hussainik and settled down uh, in the United States. So we present in this page uh, the family history written by a member of the family. Uh, we present also interesting extracts taken from the unpublished manuscript, which is called Harpert and its villages, Harpert Yevir Kurel. So it was written by Pilibos Kazanjian. Uh, the author presents here the history of the region, of the region of Harpert, the Armenian life here, different anecdotes from Harpert, and many other things. Uh, the selected extracts from, uh, from this manuscript were translated from Armenian. In this case, I would rather say from, uh, uh, from, from Harperti uh, Armenian, from the local dialect. Uh, they were trans translated into English and Turkish. And on the website, they are presented in three languages. We also present on this web page uh, more than 100 pictures, old photographs, but also memory objects uh, conserved by the family, drawings. For example, there are drawings of uh, the, the family house of, uh, of the Kazanjian in, in Husenik. Uh, it, was, uh, it was drawn by the son of Pilibos Kazanjian, uh, Khosrov Kar Kazanjian in the 1930s completely based on his memories, on his memoirs, on his memories. So it, it uh, he, uh, and yeah, this is this, this one. Uh, the richness of the materials of, in the Kazanjian family collection is main, mainly due to the fact that the family left Harpert in 1907. That means long before the genocide and later descendants of the family continued to conserve these uh, materials. I will show you another web page uh, where the family, in this case, unlike the Kazanjian family, were still in their hometown in 1915 during the genocide. So that means they lost everything and the survivors continued a new life in the United States. This one is the Shahinian family page. The Shahinians are from Van. The old uh, family photos or memory items uh, from the old country are missing here. Uh, but we have uh, what is called materials uh, from intangible cultural heritage. In this case, these are songs from Van. Both uh, in Van and later in the United States, singing, dancing, uh, family feasts were really very frequent in the Shahinian's house. Uh, and the songs presented on this page were often performed uh, during family gatherings. And what is very exceptional in this case is that many of these songs were recorded in the 1950s by the family itself. And in this way, some unique and really uh, wonderful songs, mostly Armenian, but also in Kurdish and Turkish, sung by uh, the, the main figure of the family or the main singer of the family, Vagar Shak Shahinyan, and his wife, uh, Shushanik Shahinyan uh, uh, Tohavchian. Uh, both were native of Van, and these songs uh, were saved uh, through these recordings and now accessible through this uh, web page. Uh, so again, uh, we are dealing in these two examples, in this uh, with these two web pages, uh, we are dealing with extremely rich collections in terms of uh, memory items, both tangible and intangible. So the most important in our ODA section is to document the rich, but also the diverse heritage of Ottoman Armenians and to present uh, that diversity, uh, diversity of the individual and family experiences. So all this, uh, uh, all these experiences offer us important clues for a better understanding of the Ottoman Armenian environment. Uh, the last collection that I want to, pre to present here uh, is the Mardikian family collection. Uh, the materials that uh, you see here are collected 
during our last workshop, Hushama Dian's workshop. It was a couple of months ago and it uh, took place in Thessaloniki in Greece. The family inherited only one single tangible memory object from, and that was an object from their ancestors coming from Adapazar. It is the photograph of a unique icon, uh, the icon of the Holy Virgin. And this icon uh, was, or this painting was also displayed in the Armash Monastery in the Bursa region. So the icon, the painting was in the Armash Monastery. And uh, this, uh, uh, this, the original icon of the Holy Virgin was a beloved place uh, by the pilgrims who visited each year the Armash Monastery. What is very interesting in Mardik's story, family story, is that the Armash Monastery, together with the icon of the Holy Virgin, the painting, were all destroyed in the 1920s, 1930s. But the family, uh, now refugees in Greece, continued to keep the photograph, which itself, uh, the photograph became an icon and uh, it possessed or it started to possess the same inspiring power for the believers. And uh, as we learned from the family oral history, uh, refugee from Arme uh, refugee Armenian women uh, in Thessaloniki, just as uh, they had done in Armash, in Armash monastery during pilgrimages in the past, would visit Mardik's family house and kneel before the photograph and pray as they were doing in Armash in the past. So these are the three pages. And again, I give the floor to Elke. I just um, started to talk about this building connections by contextualizing. So I will continue to speak on that topic and uh, highlight this, this point of, uh, of connecting, connecting lost ends, let's say. In, by purpose and also in effect of, of the growing Hushamadian website is that all this like assembled, the materials assembled on the website, they connect people, peoples and generations in various ways. There is one dimension of connecting generations, connecting generations of Armenians Again, I'm taking up um, a point that Levon Avduyan has already made in his introduction that, or maybe not in his introduction, but in the conversation we had before, that the families, the first generation of survivors, and many of us know this from own family histories, they were not necessarily able to talk. So they were passing on their experience um, in many times through silence. And the second generation somehow had to deal with this silence. So there was a missing link between the generation, between the first generation who was familiar with the life they had led in the Ottoman Empire and the second generation who was not familiar with it, who grasped some, some impressions of that life, but stood before a, a wall of silence or partly told stories about this lost life world. So via Hushamadian, it is like they get a new connection. There is yet another connection between Armenian generations, between those generations who still know, understand, read, speak Armenian, and those who don't speak anymore, which is maybe the bigger part of the Armenian communities in the West, in the United States, also in European countries like France or so, where the first generation of survivors would live in such an, uh, conditions of assimilation pressure that they, in many cases, did not manage to pass the language on. And uh, so by translating and by contextualizing and explaining the items and memories and family photographs and so on, we connect the generations to each other. Another le uh, level of connection is to connect the Armenian people to one another. 
the various Armenian communities with their various experiences and stories of how the families or how individuals survived, how they lived in the various different regions of the Ottoman Empire, uh, how, they, how they settled in their new countries under a great variety of conditions. So there are the stories of Armenians in the Ottoman Empire are manifold by region, by social di distinction, by uh, urban population or rural population and what have you. If you put this all together, then uh, this great variety is taken out from isolation and connected to one another. One may see similarities, one may see differences, one may interpret the conditions of, of certain um, uh, Armenian communities uh, throughout the world. From the Middle East, where the communities were still Armenian speaking and improved their Armenian speaking with Armenian schools, for example, um, Syria or Lebanon or Palestine, to the conditions completely different um, in the United States, or also those survivors who migrated to the East and then settled in uh, what later became Soviet Armenia. So we have a great variety and Hushama Dian, um, in putting all these family histories together, connects the Armenian communities with their different experiences to one another. And so another level of connecting people to, to each other is um, connecting the Armenians and the descendants of Ottoman Armenians who are now scattered around the world as the children and grandchildren and great grandchildren of survivors to those people who are still living in those lands where Armenian traces are to be found and somehow share the memories. This is not a point of idealizing a shared past. This past was full of conflict and ended in genocide. However, this, the past, even with all the conflict, even with the catastrophe of genocide, even, if, even uh, with the different roles Armenian and Kurds and Turks and all other population groups have played in this story, it is still a shared history. It is still a shared memory. And uh, we can say that like the greater half of our readers now of the Husha Madian webpage, they come from Turkey. And the readers of Husha Madian or, or the users of Husha Madian, the numbers exploded when we started publishing the Turkish translation. So we feel that there is a, a, um, there is a need for, for this kind of, of everyday history, of reconstructing everyday history and the Armenian presence to inscribe the Armenian presence into history and historiography and memory, not only on the Armenian side, but also on the side of the former neighbors and maybe even enemies, let's say, of the Armenians. So connecting, connecting Armenians with the other with the other population groups with whom they shared the same, um, the, the same space, let's say. Yet there is also another connection, um, another level or sphere of connection. This is connecting Armenian history or Ottoman history, Ottoman everyday life, the history of the Ottoman Armenians to let's say the rest of the world. So Hushamadian, Makes, makes this memory and makes this history accessible, again, via translation, via explanation, via contextualization, via language-wise translation. We have the, the, the website is in three languages. Most of the texts are written in Western Armenian, which means bringing Western Armenian again to a new life, sometimes creating or re vitalizing new vocabulary or old vocabulary in Western Armenian. And so making and making, turning Western Armenian um, a used language also for uh, a scholarly, scholarly articles. So all this is very important, but the translations are equally important. And the English translation makes it possible to connect Armenian memory, Armenian life, Armenian history, Ottoman history to the rest of the world, to all those who may be interested 
in uh, looking at Armenian history and finding answers and trying to reflect some of the main problems our societies, US American society, European societies, uh, Turkish society today, Armenian society is dealing with. Like studying Armenian history as we do with Hushamadian means to open up a space to reflect on what does modernity do to humans? Modernity, which meant uh, homogenization. And this homogenization came about in a very violent way. And we still are continuing to face this kind of national homogenization processes in other parts of the world. And again, even in the part of the world Armenians were living. Today's Turkey, today's Syria, today's Iraq, which were all former Ottoman provinces, the Balkans. Uh, also like to understand uh, how a society could have or tried to organize or to deal with plurality and diversity, which is one of the main challenges in our societies today. It is a thing that German society and political sphere and also United States are reflecting. Studying Armenian history provides a good example for all of these questions and for the hopes and maybe utopias that people, people try to think on. And of course, we know in retrospect that this ended in genocide, but not every experiment in organizing and living plurality and diversity has to end necessarily in genocide. So um, maybe Husham Adyan can give a clue and get, can provide ground for reflection and connect Armenian experience and Armenian also Armenian diaspora experience, which becomes more and more um, important, I think, for a globalized world. Connecting Armenian diaspora experience and genocide survivors experience and the experience of living in this late Ottoman society with all its conflicts connecting this, all of this to the rest of the world and providing, providing an invitation to reflect on that. I think we should stop here and open the floor for questions. Well, you certainly have given us much food for thought on several levels, um, from academic research to familiar research to Armenian history, which of course is served by collections such as the ones you have, have made. Uh, let me start off with a very, before I open the floor, with a very selfish question, if I might. Um, I value digital resources highly but I am old enough to, to still value as well hard copies and books and pu publications. And to that end, I have in my hands a prized book um, called Ottoman Armenians, Life, Culture, Society, Volume One. And it was put out by your organization. And um, it is a beautiful book and I often, thumb through it and I read this page and that page. My question is simple. Along with your efforts, your digital efforts on your website and on Facebook, et cetera, do you envision a follow-up volume of, of this work? You saw I already covered my face. You did, ashamed. and I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, because of course this is this is I take all the blame on me. I am in charge to edit the second volume, which is already in preparation for Excellent. several years by now. And because I was changing universities and I had recently assumed a new position at a new university. So I hardly found the time to finish the book, but the book is close to be finished and close to publication. Hushamadian Ottoman Armenians volume, volume two. I, I, I'm sorry, I did not mean to embarrass you <laughs> and everyone has been in your shape but perhaps I can use this as an opportunity to tell the listeners uh, to this 
event that if they are able to buy this book, they will, they will not be sorry. It is indeed a rich collection and a beautiful collection on, on every level. Um, may I ask those of you who have questions to raise your hand? Uh, there is a way on your site. Um, let us know if you have questions and I will unmute you and please show your face. Do, do realize, however, that this program is being recorded. So by asking a question, you do agree uh, to have your uh, image and your question as part of that video. So are there any questions, uh, follow-ups to this mar marvelous have, presentation? I'm sorry to have interrupted you. We have a first question in the chats. And oh, there's really? also the possibility to, uh, to write a question into the chat. So Leon Fodulian, Fodulian asks, do we know if these Armenians from Turkey if these are Armenians from Turkey or Turkish citizens of Turkey, I guess this um, goes to the readers of Hushamadian. Well, um, many of them are indeed, they, um, they write us emails, they are either Turks or Kurds living in the provinces which were formerly um, provinces inhabited by also a great portion of Armenian population. Uh, so many of them are non-Armenians. Of course, we don't know about each individual. Yeah, it's pr probably the question is if there 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 are among these Turks uh, Islamized Armenians. Probably, I, I'm, I'm guessing that, but it's it's difficult to to guess uh, and to to reply to that question. But just just one one important notice that we have uh, an average of. Uh, 5000 uh, visitors from turkey each month uh, each wow. month that's, that's that's the that's the number 5000 and let me also add that now there is a growing interest of course we are talking about a minority in society but among turkish academicians among turkish historians there is a growing interest in the history of the armenians of the ottoman empire a number of Turkish colleagues have started or have already learned Armenian. One of them has contributed to the first volume of the Hushamadian, uh, which you just now mentioned, Levon. Um, he fluently reads Armenian and uses Armenian sources, and he's not, he's not alone. We are cooperating with those colleagues as well who, who combine the knowledge of Armenian and Ottoman and are able to use both um, both funds of, of, of sources. And uh, so, and in the, same, in the same time, there is a growing interest among young, um, younger Armenian scholars. And I'm very happy to, indeed, I'm happy to see some of my former students uh, at the Armenian chair in Budapest um, among our visitors today. So we have a growing number of younger Armenian students who learn Turkish and Ottoman, and turn on to this history, which is which is important, like to write the history of the Ottoman Armenians. Excellent. And I see there is another chat question um, down there. Does the Hushamadian uh, site have a forum or space for discussion? And that is from uh, Ani Mat um, Matrosyan. Sorry, my vision. We have a Facebook page, but it's not a forum of, for discussion because really we don't have the resources for that. And I know it's very important. I know that discussion is also part of, uh, of, uh, of to study uh, the, the, the subject of uh, the history of Ottoman Armenians, but uh, our resources are fo focused on only on the preparation of our web pages to write articles, to collect materials, and uh, for the discussion, if uh, until now we don't have enough resources for that. And it is true that discussions are vitally important for every project, I can understand that. And if you will allow me, your, your point about the Armenians of Greece, uh, that you, you said you were coming out with an article, is this correct? Um, yes, yes. I, it led me to remember that at the Library of Congress, we have quite a, I'm still saying we, apologies. They, they have, um, 
they have a collection of the Near East Relief Society papers, some of it unpublished. Mm -hmm. And I was thumbing through, I believe it was their 1932 Board of Trustees meeting, where there's a five page description of how the Soviets were going back on their promise to repatriate the Armenians who had been uh, assigned to Marathon. Uh, so there are all sorts of documents out there that perhaps when you let people know that you are studying a particular area, uh, you might be pointed to. And as a matter of fact, I'd be glad to send that to you if, if it's of any interest to you. Um, so that is one thing. Do we have other questions either in the chat or someone who would like to unmute and to um, take advantage of our wonderful speakers today? I see a question in the chat again, okay. Leon Fodulian. Second question, was there yes. a surge in new research project initiated thanks to the ODA? I assume that these archives provide a wealth of material to work on that go beyond the framework of typical archival documents. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the, the, the one the one about Greece is, is something that uh, that was born through the the, uh, the, the ODA section yeah? and and now uh, with uh, Greek Armenians called colleagues in Athens. Uh, we are working on, on a different project. It's not about the uh, Ottoman Armenian refugees who came to, to Greece. Of course, it's again the, the same families, but they ex experienced uh, another atrocities during the Nazi occupation uh, period in Greece uh, from 1941 to 1944. And, uh, and we discovered, for me, it's something completely new. Uh, uh, I discovered that uh, there are many families in Greece, uh, Armenian families, uh, whose members, members of these families were imprisoned, killed, or even uh, 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 transferred to Germany to work in uh, concentration camps. Uh, or, uh, and, uh, and, and recently, I, I read a book about, uh, th this is a very new book. It's, it's not yet published, but I received the PDF of the book. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's in German. And uh, if you see the, the list of uh, persons imprisoned in Greece and sent to later to, to Germany uh, as forced laborers, you can see that uh, a considerable number of them are, are Armenians. So this is for us a new uh, chapter and uh, we are working on this. So we, uh, the recent articles that we published on Greek Armenian families, we added a new, uh, a new label or a new title on, 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 this, uh, on these articles. It's, uh, and it's became uh, Armenian Greek uh, families a bit, uh, from the Ottoman atrocities to uh, the, the occupation period of, uh, of uh, Greece. So this is for us something new. Uh, at the end, uh, in next year, we will even organize an exhibition in, in Athens that will be also uh, 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 repeated in, uh, in, in, in Berlin. Uh, yes, and this, this is something that was born uh, in our ODA section through our workshops that we organized in, in, in Athens and Thessaloniki and where families came and they, they told their stories. And in these stories, we discovered that there is also something, uh, something an important chapter of, their, of the Armenian history because it's also part of the Armenian history that was until now uh, very, very, uh, yeah, it's it was forgotten. I, I, I can say just simply forgotten. Maybe there is also another dimension, or let me let me talk about another example on a different level. Um, one is like this kind of level that I mentioned now that you come you 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 come to topics through the family histories, like the fate of the Armenians then deported by Nazi Germans. Um, but there is also like some of the materials when we started collecting and then we came across these, um, the, um, the recorded songs or so, then um, 
started this music project or the music galleries and now um recently they started a new um a new um, topic on the Hushamadian, which is dances mm -hmm. and uh, here this goes way beyond you know the 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 usual archival uh, archival work to reconstruct the dances and to publish these pages together with let's say experts on armenian armenian folk dances from the various regions combined with historical materials combined with their expertise and then producing these little videos where and step by step like explanations of the dance um, and video demonstration uh, mm -hmm. where um, yeah it, when one can one can also like learn or get acquainted to this part of the culture um, and also maybe the the, the sites um, of the recipes um, are some of this category because here historical research is combined with the uh, with like publishing the traditional recipes and and bringing them back or like some people some people may may choose a recipe from the website and try to cook to cook this um, and uh, explore explore these historical recipes. We have a couple of more questions in the chat. Do you want to uh, take the one from uh, Miss Natalie Cruz? I know that Hushamadian has a tab for volunteers. Are those opportunities still available? If so, what does that entail? Would you have to be in a specific city to volunteer? Of course, uh, we, we are delighted to, to work with volunteers. Uh, we have a network of volunteers. Uh, just to mention that we have also a branch, uh, a Hushamadian uh, association uh, or, uh, operating in the United States. Uh, Ani, Ani is there, Ani Kasparian is there. She, she is the uh, chairperson of the, of the association. And uh, so, of course, it, uh, when, when it becomes to volunteers, uh, the, the best thing is to talk with the, with the person. And, uh, and then we can see how we can cooperate, uh, in which field we can cooperate, uh, but we are open, we, we need volunteers, we have volunteers and we still need volunteers, of course. And actually there's a question from Laurie uh, Alvandian. Uh, is there much engagement with the website from people from Armenia? You mentioned the aim of connecting different groups of Armenians around the world. Could this type of data be used to prove a strengthening relationship? Uh, uh, wait a minute. A uh, strengthening relationship between Armenians in, Arme uh, uh, in Armenia and the diaspora. In uh, Elke, you want to, to answer? Uh, I, I think, well, we uh, like part of the Hushamadian, like, as we work, the practical um, uh, the practical process of working is like this material connect collecting rallies we organize the Hushamadian days or Hushamadian events or Hushamadian workshops, and so this is uh, the the way we are doing this. We are um, uh, going or we we are planning a trip to to one community where a lot of Armenians live be it Greece, be it Beirut, be it uh, some places in the United States, various places, or Istanbul, and of course, also Armenia. So we come to the place, we formally announce that Hushamadian will give a talk or a project presentation, and then we stay a couple of days in that city, and then we start like asking the people, or we announce in Armenian newspaper if there is, or other media, if there are, that Hushamadian team is coming to this city and we ask the people to bring what they have. And then we sit at a place, a school or a cultural center or so. And uh, then people come with their family, with their family items and tell the stories. And there again, we need uh, volunteers on the spot because, because then like many people come and we record the story and we digitize the photos and the memoirs and whatever the people bring and we photograph items and, and take notes on the stories. And we did this kind of Hushamadian events in Armenia too. So Armenia is not like, it's not like 
that the diaspora are the genocide survivors and the Republic of Armenia is something different, but genocide survivors are also like some of the survivors came to what is today Armenia. So we have these survivors communities in Armenia as well, and all the families with, connected with their family stories. And it's just another variant of continuing Armenian life and coming to terms on dealing with the Ottoman Armenian heritage. So of course there is a link. And of course, um, we also have Armenian, Republican Armenian readers and uh, users of the website. And also I should mention that we, um, both of us were teaching for a couple of years and we co-founded a chair of modern Armenian studies at the Catholic University in Budapest in Hungary. And uh, there we had Hungarian students and we had each year by scholarship, we had a number of students from Armenia and from Artsakh. So, um, and what we do there, it's not one-to-one -one, um, equivalent to Hushamadian, but we, we um, a lot of our teaching material we took from Hushamadian or we are telling like we adopt the perspective on Armenian history. So of course there is connection. And then all of these people, they go back to Armenia and, and whatever like they they may have like started thinking about they may transfer to their republican armenian context we cooperate with with colleagues who live in armenia we cooperate with uh, translators who live in armenia and uh, with authors who live in armenia yes there is a connection very good i'm afraid that we are running out of time um so we do not have time for additional questions, but I do want to urge not only the people who have kindly signed in to listen to this wonderful presentation, to continue with their support for Hushamadian, but to let their friends and relatives know who might not know about this invaluable resource. You can tell the passion that our speakers, Vahe and Elke, have for the, the project. I want to assure them it already has had a great impact on scholarship and on personal histories. And I wish them success, great success in the future. And thank you for really giving us a stimulating presentation today. I'm sure I speak for everyone. And for all of you here, if you have interests in libraries and archives and in, and I'm not being too grandiose when I say that, in the institutions, who along with Hushamadian and, and others are responsible for the retention of Armenian culture uh, through the ages. Uh, think about joining the International Association of Armenian Librarians and Archivists. We're brand new, we are just expanding. Uh, you can send a message to info at iaala.org if you would like to join us. You would have to join the Society of Armenian Studies we are growing, we are receptive to uh, all sorts of suggestions on how we should grow and how we should unite the library and archive world with scholars around the world and unite our passion, which is after all, the culture and history of our people. With that, Vahe Tashan Elke thank you so very much. And as I said, continued success in what you do. And thank you all for joining us. And I hope you will be with us for the next Yala in Focus. Thank you. Thank you for organizing this event. Thank you very much.